Hello, this is David Lee with Flash Movie Game Philosophy. And we are back again, finally, towards the end of season four to do what we, or maybe the end of season four. We'll see if, if the Pokemon thing is going to be a, a, a beginning five or end of four. Um, that we did two years, like two years ago, we did a discussion on Persona 3. Luckily, the Persona 3 remake has come out. Um, I since but we basically talked about persona 3 uh, and i know there's additions to it, especially to our favorite uh people who think that life is meaningless i know there's going to add more to that but until i see that myself i don't want to talk about it yet so instead oh, i want to talk about that I, 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 I know i know i know we want to talk about that those guys again but um i i, I need to i we'll do that again we will do that again i know they, they get development in the remake so that that'll be fun but we're going to talk instead about politics Jung try a game that tries to merge Jung and politics. Um, but first, how about you introduce yourself, Professor Cooper? Professor Cooper, Stephen Cooper, uh, professor of religious studies, Franklin Marshall College, uh, expert in early Christianity and its crossovers with Greek philosophy, uh, dilettante in the world of contemporary commentary on things like politics and then stuff I don't know about but thanks to David I'm being introduced to the world of video games uh and everything cool that goes on kind of other intellectual hobby psychoanalysis Freud Jung which is what we're here for which is the main the reason we're here. yeah yeah yes so before since this is since this is now turning into our new version I'm basically just recording our show and tell that I, that I usually do just at, at Cooper's office hours. Um, before we get to the main topic, um, there is another game being made by the people who made per the Persona 3, 4, and 5, um, which is basically a merging of Persona and Game of Thrones. And there's something very interesting that I think you'll find that I was very happy to hear. Um, but I will play. It's just a minute clip where it's not the game is not out yet. This is just the developer talking about the game. Okay, I'll, I'll Even like though it's a world where magic exists, people can't use it without help. In this world, you have to purchase a special piece of equipment to be capable of magic. Magic is a kind of power that is supposed to spring from a person's imagination, but that art has been lost over time. Now, magic has more restrictions. In other words, people have become reliant on the world's magical tools. That said, the main characters are able to transform their own bodies into weapons, which we call archetypes. There, that's what I've been waiting to show you. But I, I guess let me finish it. It's, it's just like 20 more seconds. People are born with various heroic aspects. Yes. There you go. For some reason, this okay. word so, has not shown up in all of Persona. And they finally okay. used the word archetype here. Would that they had never used it if they're going to couple it with the word weapons. Yeah. Uh, this Well, this, this kind of leads into what I, what I sort of want to get to talk to about in a while is what's the point of Jungian psychology identification of archetypes? Is it just a realm of fun and games with the collective unconscious? Or are there serious ethical issues, as Jung intimates on practically every uh, piece of writing he ever did on the topic of archetypes? The the framing uh, will we'll come back to this. So, like, what is it about the archetypal world that I would argue, and it seems like this producer also wants to say, draws young men into the world of at least an imaginary world. Uh, of of weapons. That's and interesting. So that's up where where I want to go later. But, which is but, they're, but they're, the interesting thing is they they are going to take the word archetype very literally, which is apparently why they saved archetype all the way for this instead of you and use personas for personas, because this, the what, what here's what the kind of the, the word they use associated with archetype. Okay. But these embodiments are typically never awakened, and when they are, it's not as though it was predetermined. An awakening happens by interacting with others and being inspired by their actions. For example, you might think to yourself that someone acts very much like a knight, or another person might seem like a true warrior. 
By making this connection, the archetype of the warrior, which has been dormant within you since birth, is awakened. That's how the system works. So they, so they use specifically they specifically use the word they're going by the actual big archetypes as opposed to like different religious figures. The warrior. I'm yeah, guessing yeah. the magician. And I, I, I think they're correct to do that, but they're acting as if as if the conscious personality has freedom over these archetypes once they're activated, which, which is actually a fundamental misunderstanding of Jung and one that I had as a college student. And let me tell you just a brief story about that. Of course. So this is in the late 1970s at Hampshire College. Uh, I had been introduced to Jung, Freud, Reich, whole psychoanalytic tradition. And uh, what was probably the most famous Jungian analyst of the time came to the college to give a talk. That was James Hillman. Oh, I love Hillman. Yeah. Okay. So, so here's the story. Uh, maybe a couple of years before, I, I I tripped out an LSD very intensely, and it was sort of the end of my tripping career. Uh, this is nineteen spring of nineteen seventy seven, um, and it was the end of my tripping career because I, I contacted a, a layer of the psyche that like freaked the fuck out of me, mm -hmm. and. And I also had been reading enough Freud and Jung that I understood that what I was contacting was below the level of the personal con contents of one's own like father complex or whatever the Freudian stuff would be. And I kind of fell into this other realm and I was like, oh, shit, all I want to be is my smaller, normal self going about my business on campus. Came down from the trip. Important stuff happened in my psyche that I, like I broke through some unconscious material in childhood that was like tying me in knots. And so I associated this trip and the contacting of, of these deep layers of the unconscious with the kind of personal freedom I'd gotten over personal complexes. Uh, but, but I, I had not yet gone into therapy that would have to wait. I'd be in my early twenties and I'd made a bad marriage and came out of it quickly. And I was like, I must get myself to a psychoanalyst. And I went to a, a Jungian and I was in therapy for like seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. Very, very helpful in my 20s and, and early 30s. Anyway, when James Hillman came and gave this lecture, uh, after lecture, I raised my hand and I said, Professor Hillman, um, from my own experience, I associate the archetypes with freedom. I, is that right? And he looked at me very gravely. Oh, and and he said, uh, "No, I I think you've got a, a mistake. The archetypes are representative of instincts that, unless you develop conscious personal relationships, critical relationships to unconscious material, they drag you along in old instinctual patterns." And you don't get to the freedom of it just by following the fascinating power of the archetype. Right. And I never forgot that because, honestly, I, I was a little disappointed in Hillman's answer because I, I didn't quite realize how I'd misinterpreted my experience and what the freedom mm. aspect of it was. There was a freedom aspect. But it wasn't something that the archetypes bestowed on me. It, well, it was it was rather a releasing from some personal complexes that were all within the realm of the Freudian unconscious. So so when I see someone saying, like, the contact with other people can awaken the warrior in you, and then you become the warrior, that's exactly the worrisome thing that Hillman was talking about, mm -hmm. which is because just like instinctual activity, eating sex, raising a child, which, which I've experienced with incredibly meaningful, all the instinctual activities, working for a living, instinctual activities are, are very meaningful. And when you're engaged in them, there's really no question of meaninglessness because you're, you're feeding yourself, you're engaging in a deep relationship, which could lead to propagation of the species. You know, you're, you're putting bread on the table. Uh, all that stuff is meaningful. And so, for, for someone who doesn't feel any meaning, it's kind of great to get on 
that sort of archetypal sort of pattern of doing these human things that feels so deeply meaningful. This, you know, and I'm not denying that. And, and for the same reason too, being conscripted into into a war uh, is, is a deep level meaning situation. There's a uh, an author called Chris Hedges who wrote a book called War is a Force that Gives Life Meaning. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. the problem is not everything that gives life meaning is is good, personally freeing, or liberating. Yes. You can get plenty of meaning by following a fascist dictator. Exactly. And, and can I so you this is what we're talking about. So it's like it's not fun and games with the archetypes. It's be very careful about the unconscious powers awoken in the psyche that can make you feel deeply tuned in. And when and we'll come back to this. So why don't you yeah. tell me some more and when Yes. Um, okay. We'll now now on now I guess I will say regarding instincts, I will say now we're on to Persona 5 Tactica. Um, you're, I've shown you many of the, showed you original Persona 5, I've shown you Persona 5 Royal, I've shown you Persona 5 Strikers. I know it's all probably hazy for you because it's been a while, but um, I will say for this one, it actually does very interestingly finally use the word instinct when we get to not so, the, the, the god figure. I'm just going to say it. Spoilers for, I'm just going to be spoiling all of this game already, um, that the god figure is more of an instinct which is basically implied with the other ones, but here they say straight up, it is an instinct. And I will, I guess I'll save what that instinct is. Hopefully we have time to get to it. If not, I'll say it during when, when, when I have to, but it is born of an instinct. And it's, and it's, and it shows that that instinct is not that positive. It is actually not positive in some ways. And it actually stops change. So that, that makes sense because instincts inadvertently protect the individual but they relate to the evolution of the species and they're designed to to really propagate the species yeah and, it's, know, it's, it's all it's, 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 it's all about, about i'll just i'll just say it but i, I want to i want to still hear you how it's explained in game but it they say that samael is this instinct of is our instinct of self is a, our of our of self-preservation